Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now today's video is going to be, I think, a pretty cool one. We are going to look at a product from the company Creative XP. Now Creative XP was founded in 2006 by a husband and wife team who wanted to create premium hunting gear. And what we're going to look at today is some of their optics. Now Creative XP, all of their products are designed in the U.S., partially manufactured oftentimes in the US and shipped out of the US. And what we're gonna look at today is a really cool and I think very interesting piece of equipment that's gonna give me, I'm hoping, some pretty unique opportunities. And so what I have here is Creative XP's Glass Owl Infrared Binoculars. So these here are gonna give me, I'm hoping, the ability to pretty much see at night. Now I have done some preliminary research to take a look at people's feedback and they are getting very, very good reviews on this Glass Owl product. So this here being the Pro, there are a couple of different versions, but here being the Pro, and I am pretty excited to take a look at these. So what we're gonna do is in today's video, an unboxing, a first impressions, and a first use video, kind of getting these in my hands for the first time, and later on I'm gonna do a full follow-up using these in the field and really getting into deep, deep detail using these at length. So with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to show you in the dark. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Creative XP who did provide this product for review. Now again, these are the Glass Owl Pro Infrared Binoculars. And Creative XP has been getting a lot of praise for their quality optics. And that's one of the things that I'm going to be looking for is the overall quality, the clarity, but also the capability. These have the ability to see at night and at length. Now, there's a lot going on with these, and I'm going to actually have to kind of read up on it a little bit as we go to make sure that I report everything accurately, because I do want to give you the details, and I don't want to misquote. But... Overall, I do have a few things that I think while I get these out in the field, I am going to want to try, but I'm not going to get into that until the second video. So again, today, what we're going to do, we're going to open this up. We're going to take a look at the product. I'm going to talk to you about the different features, get a general overview, and then we'll get these outside and test them out to see how it's going to go. And so now getting into the packaging, here you can see the Glass Owl Binoculars Pro box. These are designed by Creative XP on the back here. The Creative XP message, some image and optics and lighting specifications, basic functionality, and details about where to find Creative XP. And so here as we open the box, well, let's get into it. I have not even opened any of this yet, but taking a look through all of this, one of the first things, as you can see, this is a US-based customer service, which is great. So there are actually people that you can get on the phone if you have any problems, and that's always a bonus, so that's a big deal. And some instructions that I probably will want to look at fairly carefully. And you will see one thing they do describe is that they have tutorial videos right on their YouTube site. So they do run their own YouTube channel, and there is a lot of detail that can be found on this brand. Additional offers and promotions some of their other products, which they do have a full optics line. So everything from these binoculars to here, you'll see a spotting scope, trail cameras. They actually have sights. And here you'll see a red dot sight. This is a range finder. So they do have a number of products and then generally operating around optics. So optics based products. I would doubt this is still Available, but at the time they were giving away 20 premium tripods, so kind of neat. And a coupon code for 20% off their spotting scope, so if anybody's willing to try it, give it a shot. But yeah, the first thing you'll see is that these infrared binoculars do come in a reasonably padded case. So, so far that's a good sign. Overall seems to be fairly well constructed. Not much to it, but that's all it really needs to be. And as we get into this here, unzipping and opening up, this case well oh here we go so the creative xp glass owl 
So let's pull out all the contents here and we'll take a look at what we have in detail. So the case you'll see is form fit to hold the binoculars nicely. And there's a little accessory pouch on the top to hold all the accessories. We'll slide the pouch out of the way and we'll get into the rest of this here. So obviously the main product here being the binoculars themselves, some audio cables, a USB cable, and a strap. Here you'll see a little quick connector. This actually is for a memory card. You can plug the memory card directly into this and that will allow you to record video, so very cool. A cleaning cloth and the owner's guide. So at this point, let's start to look at this stuff in a little more detail. And again, as I mentioned, I may need to refer back to some of the literature to make sure that I'm accurate in what I'm reporting. And so one of the first things I'm gonna need to do to get started is install some batteries. And that's the first thing you'll see here is this does have a battery compartment. Now, at a quick glimpse, this does need AA batteries. To me, that's just a little bit funny this day and age. You know, I think having some good quality lithium rechargeables would be fine, or even built-in lithium rechargeables would be great, and then having a USB connector to allow you to charge this. I don't know about you, but I think the reason for the batteries is simply because if you ran out of power, you don't want to not be able to use your product. You want to be able to change out the batteries and continue moving on. But in my opinion, at this point in time, having something like a lithium battery would be better. But let's not get hung up on that. The key thing is, how does this work? How does it function? Well, I'm going to grab some batteries and we'll put them in here. And even at that I know for me personally, I have a ton of nice quality AA rechargeable batteries that I can have at the ready. So it's not like I need to use regular batteries all the time and potentially throw them away on a continuous basis. For me, I will eventually leverage my rechargeable batteries, but for the time being, I'm just gonna go with the standard batteries. So installing the batteries here should be pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna keep the ribbon beneath them. That makes it easy to remove them in the end. And getting these down and inside, they kind of alternate. So one that way, two, three, and four on that side, and one, two, three, and four on that side. Putting the covers back on and we'll be good to test this. And so there we go. There is I don't know, just a little bit of, I don't know if that's oil on there. I'm gonna keep an eye on that, but I am gonna rub that off so that it doesn't accidentally get on anything that I don't want that to get on. And that's probably lubrication here. This to me would be your focus. So I'm assuming that's focus, but we will figure that out. And so here you go. First things first, turning this on, pressing the button, what happens? Mong press. Oh, there we go. So very interesting. All right. So that now is coming up. Let's see. No lens cap there. I'm assuming that I am like heavily zoomed in here and this is probably not gonna be the best. Okay, so here is your zoom. So I'm gonna take a quick second here, figure out a couple things and we'll look at it in a little more detail. All right, so as we get into this, check this out. First thing is the button here is the zoom. So as we look through here, you will see, well, I am checking out the stickers on my mirror. So that there, you can see the size of it right in the middle of the screen. And as we get this here, you can see all of my mirror and all of the stickers. And back down to that Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And you'll see that's in good focus. And the focus is right here. So that will adjust it depending on the focal length and your eyes. And you'll see that is quite clear. But then when I press this zoom button. Well there you go. Even closer and still appears to be very clear and very nice optics. So you can see this is bouncing around just a little bit, but of course I'm just simply holding this in front of the camera. But that's pretty cool. 
I think these are going to be neat. And the next thing is, I believe this button here should record. So as we're looking through, if I push that snap button, well, there you go. That's just like a quick photograph. So that's just grabbing a quick image. And those photos are going directly into a memory card that's installed into the side of the camera. Now, right now, that's a 32 gig card that came with it. And that can be downloaded onto your computer, obviously. So we'll do that in a little bit. And we'll take a look at the image quality on screen. I'm kind of curious. And what you'll notice is, if you look in the upper right hand corner, that little logo is a camera. Well, the mode button, which is right here, will change to playback, as you can see. Those are the photos that I took. Or, if I press it again, video. So now I'm in the video mode, and if I press the snap button, well, there you go. That says record. And if I'm in the middle of recording and I zoom, it doesn't seem to let you. So if I stop recording and then press zoom, I can now record again. So that's one funny thing. Yeah, I'm pressing zoom and it's not moving for me. But if I stop recording, then I zoom and I press it again. It does allow you. So let's see the video quality. We'll take a look at that in a minute as well. And the last button on here is the infrared, which if you look next to my thumb, that's the infrared button. Now there is a cap on top that needs to be removed for the infrared mode. So I'm gonna unthread that cap and pop it off. And now, as you can see, it is not very bright out. In fact, if anything, I can say the camera's doing a better job right now than my eyes. And putting the binoculars up, well, so far we see nothing. Pressing the infrared button, there you go. I'm gonna zoom, zoom back out. Oh, that's in. Okay, so there you can see, that is my fire pit and my fence line and my neighbor's house, which I can fully illuminate. And that's a pretty good distance away. My granite seats, my little Japanese tree there. So pretty cool. Very interesting. Let's take a look someplace else. All right, so looking the opposite direction now, this is without infrared. And you'll see the house next door. And off into the distance, you can actually see a pretty good amount. But as soon as I hit the infrared button, well now you can clearly see that fence. And that fence way off in the distance, way out there, that is like four lots away. That's my whole lot, the neighbor's whole lot, and then the neighbor whose fence it actually is. And that's only infrared setting one. Another click, that's infrared setting two. And another click. That is infrared setting three. And now you're seeing actually the trees behind that fence line. So I know this isn't perfect, but that's doing a nice job and it is really illuminating everything beautifully. So at this point, I'm gonna hit record. Pressing that record button, you'll see. And we'll use this as a test to see the overall quality of the image. So this video review has been exported in 1080p and you can see comparatively the raw footage coming straight out of the binoculars is quite small. That's the case for both the photographs but also the video. And the video does not have any audio. But here you can see 
there is definitely the capability of seeing quite clearly and a number of different things while you're panning around. Now one thing that I can say is just a general observation is that you can get a little bit disoriented from time to time if you're moving around quickly. I found that as I'm scrolling around if I'm not careful and I'm moving just a little bit too fast it can get a little bit just disorienting in the slightest bit. But overall pretty good capabilities. So from features on my neighbor's house like their windows and the shingles and the trees, you can definitely make out different parts of the scenery quite easily. But what I found is you can make a dramatic improvement in the overall footage quality just by putting this on a tripod. This does have the capability of putting it on a tripod stand. And so looking at my wood pile here, just be careful, we may have an intruder. Now as I am smack dab in the middle of this review, in order for me to even comment on the quality of the footage, I do need to leverage their included card reader and take the card out of here. I will install this directly into my computer so I can download the footage and that's what you're seeing. Yeah, you may have already seen it here on this video. So getting into this here, I'm going to remove this from the package and download all of the footage that we've already taken a look at. And so the memory card and card reader working very well. Comes in this interesting little case, which I actually kind of like that. This is a multi-purpose item, which is great. So not just useful for use with the binoculars, but something you could potentially put in like an EDC bag. So that's kind of cool. Now there is also the strap, which I may or may not use. And then these cables. And if you use this cable, which is a micro USB, and plug it into a power bank, you can actually get five levels of infrared out of this rather than the three from the standard batteries, which is pretty cool. So I'll test that when we get into the heavy duty field testing. Like I mentioned, today is just a general overview and the ability to get this in front of me, look at the quality, the details, and start to understand the product. So at this point, I'm pretty encouraged. Now, something I have here is a bino pouch. So will these fit in here? Well, these might be a little different than a standard size. However, the good news is they do fit. It's a little bit taller than standard binoculars. And this is sort of like a smallish pouch, but these do work. It fits in there nicely. So this is gonna be great for me. I'm actually pretty happy with that. So, all right guys, there you have it. A real quick look at the Glass Owl Pro from Creative XP. Now again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Creative XP for providing this product for review. I am extremely excited for the opportunity to check these out and to get them out into the field for detailed field use. I think this product is gonna be excellent for a number of people. Whether you're an outdoor enthusiast, a hunter, even camping, backpacking, something like that. Now these might be a little bit bulky for backpacking, but at the same time, I'm definitely gonna be bringing these out there. I wanna see what's around me, I'm curious. It's something I've always wanted to do, I've never had the chance, and this is going to give me the opportunity. And even if you want these for home surveillance, I could see this being definitely a good idea. So all in all, I'm happy with the overall quality. The build quality seems fine. I don't see any problems. The optics seem clear. It's just gonna take a little bit of testing. Now again, today's not perfect, but you did see the overall capabilities. So in a future video, I am gonna get these out there. We're gonna get a good, hard look at these in terms of the overall capabilities, and then I will finally understand the true capabilities of these and the overall quality. So, so far, so good. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.